While you may find that you need to import data from other sources in order to create all of the layers that you want for a map that helps you visualize um, geographic variation in certain phenomena, ArcGIS Online comes with a lot of information uh, very readily available uh, from within the Add Layers menu. So I'm going to come here to Add, and I can search for some layers. These could be anything that anybody has put up there, which can make it a little bit tricky because you don't know uh, how reliable or valid um, or otherwise useful the data that you search for would be. Uh, but that is uh, possible, and especially if you have some very specific keywords to search for, including uh, where the data came from in the first place, that is certainly an option. I'm going to click on Browse Living Atlas Layers because the this is Esri data. Um, some of it is some of it is Esri, and some of it comes from a few other locations. But generally, it is a more authoritative data source. Uh, so I'm going to show Esri layers only, and then I can look at these and I it, I can search and see if there's a layer that's helpful for me. There we go, education. So there's the um, there's some U.S. education. There's some things that don't fit uh, at all. So the more, in fact, a lot of these have nothing to do with education. So there's a certain amount of just poking around that you have to do if you are going to um, try to bring in any of these living atlas layers. I'm going to go with just base population. So let's find out what we have available to us if we just want to show um, world population. So that this is US, I'm not interested in that. Uh, perhaps I would find, here we go, world population, population density. That'll be nice. That's a nice. So I just click Add to Map as a layer and close. And bingo, my map now, in addition to having um, a couple of layers that I brought up on my own, uh, that I brought in from other files. I now have World Population Estimated Density 2015 uh, that I can make visible here. This is currently on what's called the light gray canvas style base map. I can change that if I choose to. Um, it can be hard to see more than one piece of data when you have layers, so oftentimes part of what we end up doing is um, toggling things on and off so that they become more more visible. Um, there's, I'm just clicking on things to show you there's so many things that you can kind of look at whenever you are dealing with um, the elements inside of a map. So I, yeah, that's good. I don't want them to be transparent. I'd like, maybe, I don't know, symbols, change my symbol, bright blue, okay. Yes, there's just stuff that I can do to change the style. Uh, of the things that I am doing inside my layers. And I now have a mix of layers, ones that I've brought in plus ones that I can use from other places. So this is not a particularly successful example of a map that I'm showing you here, but I just wanted you to see that there are other ways to add in layers. We've done the Browse the Living Atlas. I'm going to come here to search for layers. And one thing that's kind of fun is as everyone in the class starts to create their own layers or identify layers that are appropriate for your class projects. Uh, you can search for other people's layers in the class by making sure that says my organization and then um, you know go through here and find layers that might have to do with your project. So not everybody in the class has to create a population layer for instance. If one person does it, it can become available to everyone. The pain is that you kind of have to scroll through, and here's, I mean, there's a lot of maps. These have nothing to do with your class. They're just part of Gettysburg College, so they're within your organization. I'm going to switch this over to um, here, Education 360, and now that would limit it just to ones that belong to your class group, and that would be more useful for you. I could get back to Living Atlas layers. I could um, go to ArcGIS Online, where people have placed a lot of uh, different layers. Any ones that are by Esri, it's a very good data source. They make the software, and they do a good job of having uh, data. But here's a bunch of things that just 
people have put up and made made public. I'm going to type in education this time and see what I can find. Um, public schools, GIS and women, tectonic plate boundaries, doesn't have anything to do with education. So our searching options are not all that great. I'm going to add adult literacy rate by country. So all I have to do is click add and now it's going to be done. Done adding layers and there it is. It's right there. And that is a very nice layer. Whoever created that layer did it the right way um, so that it can show up well underneath other kinds of um, layer symbols and such when you've got these colors. All right, so there we are. We have adult literacy rate by country. The darker the color, the higher the literacy rate. The lower the color, the lower the literacy rate. So in this video, I have shown you how to come to add and um, add uh, Living Atlas layers as well as search for layers that exist either within your class, within Gettysburg College web uh, uh, online maps, or from other sources that have created public maps accessible in ArcGIS Online. You can go out and find layers on the web, but that is another layer of complexity that we are not going to get in today, uh, but this should get you squared away on adding layers.